Hey guys, a slightly different video today. We'll be doing a Q&A. Hopefully this is a way to a more sort of personal relationship with you because I don't want to be just this like distant YouTuber. I actually want to make a community and be closer with you guys and really help you. So this video is sponsored by Shortform, a place where you can learn the best ideas from the world's best non-fiction books in the shortest amount of time. But I'll tell you more about them a bit later. Let's get into the Q&A. What inspired you to start your YouTube channel? Basically, it all started when I was doing an exchange year in Paris. I just had this idea at that time that I wanted to document my life in some way and I didn't know which topic I was going to make videos on but I wanted to but of course I didn't it, it was always this thing of like I want to try YouTube I want to try YouTube but I never actually pulled the trigger and that was in 2014 finally when I came out of the military I could have gone the corporate route and tried to find a job or I could you know give it a shot at YouTube and luckily enough when i started focusing on not just making videos for the sake of making videos but making videos to help other people that's when my first video started blowing up and then yeah that's how i got to where i am so i would say you know if some of you are thinking about starting a youtube channel or something like that i would say definitely give it a shot and when you do so just focus on trying to help people uh, make videos that help people. I think that's that's the biggest advice I could give you. What's your favorite music to listen to? Hmm. That's a good question. I don't really have a very distinct musical taste. I like a lot of different things. I like classical music. You know, I like Chopin. I like Tchaikovsky. I like Rachmaninoff. I also like some techno, like minimal techno. I like hip hop. I like Whitney Houston. I like uh, like Otis Redding, that kind of stuff. Just good music. Anything will do as long as it's, you know, I guess it also depends on the mood, right? Sometimes you're feeling something. Sometimes uh, you want some Marvin Gaye, sometimes, you know, whatever it is. So, yeah. Uh, favorite music, I'm not sure, actually. Can I drink a Diet Coke? Yes, you can. You can drink whatever you want. Uh, but I guess the question is... Since Diet Coke has zero calories, can I actually put it in my diet without all the bad side effects or something? Personally, I love fizzy drinks, so Diet Coke is a great way to satisfy that craving without adding excess calories that will make you gain weight, right? If you want to maintain a lean body or if you're on a cut and you're trying to lose weight, then yeah, Diet Coke, why not? You want to think, uh, in, if you start to say, oh, you know, Diet Coke has all these chemicals and I'm never going to have it, then it could cause you to get stressed and then you're not enjoying your diet anymore. You're not enjoying your food anymore. And that, I think, in the long run is worse than just having a Diet Coke and being done with it because it's not like you're going to have Diet Coke every day anyway. Which supplements would you recommend? Which supplements? I'm not a big supplement guy. I get this question a lot. I did take some protein shakes from time to time. I haven't even had a protein shake in you know, at least six months, I think, because I can get, you know, natural sources of protein with chicken breast and tuna and other lean red meats and stuff and eggs and tofu and fish and mackerel and sardines and all that. Yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with protein shakes. If you want to hit your protein levels, let's say 100 grams plus protein levels, and you don't want to add super duper excess calories onto that, uh, while you try to get your protein, then a protein shake can be very good. Other than that, supplements, you know, people talk about creatine and all this other stuff. I've never really tried it. Creatine, I did try once actually, and it gave me a headache and then I never did it again. In terms of health supplements, I think vitamin supplements are all good. Vitamin C, D, uh, mainly, that's what I take. And then also recently I tried to have more magnesium, zinc, and also Tongat Ali because apparently that's good for male testosterone having said that i always have trouble keeping consistent with with taking supplements you know so not the best guy to ask about supplements to be honest by what kilograms or pounds should we increase the weight of the dumbbells i guess that means once you you know once you're trying to progressively overload and you've hit the upper limits of your rep range let's say eight reps or ten reps how much should you increase by just the next one up whatever that is in your gym just the next level up if it's 12 kilograms and then the next one's 14 you go to 14 if the next one's 15 you go to 15. now when you get to sort of like later intermediate and trying to go to advanced levels in terms of strength adding one rep or adding even the smallest increment of weight that you have in the gym can be very 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 difficult if you're at the upper limits of your strength in your body weight in that case 
you know, it is a good idea to invest in some uh, micro weights like Olympic weights, you know, 1.25 or even 0.75 kilograms, you know, the smallest, smallest plates and really baby step your way in terms of strength gains. But this is for the small minority of people that are that have been training for, you know, at least three years consistently and they're at the upper limits of their strength level. What's your favorite food? Jesus. I mean, that's that's too difficult. You know, there's too many. I love kimchi jjigae. This is like hot kimchi stew with pork in it and obviously kimchi and it's like korean people's soul food it's spicy it's just it just hits a spot that no other food in the world does and koreans will know what i'm talking about i would say yeah kimchi jjigae if i had to choose one even though i love italian food and japanese food you know i love sushi sashimi uh like tuna belly i love uh like really authentic roman carbonara and margarita pizza i love vongole i love all kinds of stuff it's, it's a cruel question next when you're stuck in a slump what you gonna do to get over it whether it's workout or life related depends what kind of stuck you know i'm at an age where slumps are now seen as sort of part of the process right so i think in my early 20s every time there was a slump i would kind of you know think there was something majorly wrong yeah nowadays it's more about just being aware of how i'm feeling in my body and in my mind and then trying to accept that feeling as part of a process and as part of the story of getting good at something and just uh, going with that because you know there's this um audiobook that i listen to called the power of now or the new earth it's by both by Eckhart Tolle very very powerful book to meditate with if you decide to listen to it i highly highly recommend this but there's a line in there where he says struggle or stress is a sign that your ego has returned when i listened to that i listened to that yesterday and i was like it was so it hit me because it's so true when you're feeling like you're in a slump or you're struggling or you're stressed usually it's a sign that you are comparing your current self to this future thing that you really want to get to right so you have this goal you have this aim and you're like i'm in a slump in relation to that goal right or maybe you just found yourself you know out of a job or out of a relationship or lost for a direction in your life and you're like i'm in a slump because i'm not going where i want to go but this is essentially all your ego trying to big itself up trying to get validation by achieving that next thing and if you just bring awareness back to your present moment right and ask yourself like what's actually wrong with the moment the, the present moment not what's gonna happen tomorrow or on tuesday because you didn't do this or that or not what happened before like your girlfriend broke up with you like none of that just like right this moment what is actually wrong and you want to constantly practice this kind of presence and obviously you know the extension of this is meditation um and there are many ways to meditate i guess so i would say yeah meditation is is one of the best ways that you can uh, that i actually opt for when it comes to overcoming a slump does training for hypertrophy and strength matter muscle and aesthetics get built either way technically yes right so for those that don't know hypertrophy is basically just means muscle growth and the range of reps that you want to do from up to optimize muscle growth right the hypertrophy is is probably around five to ten reps whereas if you want to gain strength you'd be training more in the lower rep ranges of like one to four one to five maybe and yes muscle and aesthetics get built either way it's a strange question because yeah yeah they get built either way it's about your priorities it's about how you want to structure it it's about what other things are important to you right is getting stronger important to you when you go to the gym okay then strength training is probably a good idea is growing muscle making the muscle bigger important to you then training in the hypertrophy sort of rep range is also good for you as well and the sweet spot i feel is doing both because you don't want to just go for muscle growth and be all pumped up and be weak and you also don't want to be like this strong guy that looks really bad so 
I always say the sweet spot is like the strength hypertrophy combined range, which might be four to eight reps. I can't do pull-ups. Should I focus on assisted pull-ups, inverted rows? There are lots of options. I would say better than assisted pull-ups, it's inverted rows are a better option. Assisted pull-ups, whether it's bands or these kind of weights and machines that you have in the gym, usually they don't translate that well to you being able to do an actual pull-up. Right, people do resistance band pull-ups all the time. They're like, oh my God, I can do it, I can do it. But when you actually put them with their body weight, it's much harder. So if you can't do one pull-up, the best thing you can do is, first of all, work on your grip strength and make your dead hang strong. Then you wanna do negatives, right? Where you jump to the top position or you start from the top position of the chin up or the pull-up and you slowly go down, right? You wanna just do that. This is probably the best thing you can do. Then you want to do some scapular pull-ups, you know, practice retracting your shoulder blades to correct the form. It's basically like a tiny mini pull-up, the start of a pull-up, right? And you keep doing that with progressive overload and you'll get better and better at it until you can actually do one chin-up. You'll surprise yourself. And that's the best way to do it. But if I had to choose between uh, assisted pull-ups and inverted rows, definitely inverted rows. How long did it take you to get aesthetic and how often did you train in the first three months? Most of the time I trained three times a week sometimes in the military and sometimes when i do bodyweight training i do four times a week but never more than four times 90 percent of the time it's three times a week sometimes less sometimes two times sometimes one time a week because i'm too busy with other stuff how long does it take do did it take me to get aesthetic depends on what you mean i did start training like going to the gym at university but i go some years on some years off some months on some months off but you know as i show in my thumbnails like that transformation from like this average chubby blob to like a really lean look that took you know six months and if you include all the training years that i had before you know you could say it took multiple years how to trust the process hmm see that's a deep question how do you trust the process you just have to. I think one of the ways you can do this is to look at past processes that have happened, right? So for example, when I started YouTube, right? There's this thing that I've got written down still and it's, I read it the other day and it kind of, um, it kind of made me, made me smile because I was writing this in the military and I wrote down, I was like, I want to do YouTube when I get out and I know it's going to be hard I know that it's going to take a long time and I wrote this whole thing down and I hadn't even I didn't even have a channel at this point and I was like but as long as I'm you know authentic and vulnerable and I share value and I apply all the things that I learned in my life then I know that you know it's going to go well and part of doing well at something is sucking at it for a while and I accept that it's going to be very very difficult I'm going to suck for a while like I wrote all this down and that's kind of like trusting the process. The reason I realized that is because I knew that everything else that I'm sort of like half decent at, I knew that I sucked for a long time before I got good at it, right? Whether it's languages or sports or whatever. There was a period of sucking at it, being embarrassed or just, you know, failing hard. And it was an, there was an absolute amount of time and investment that was required before I hit a certain level. And I just knew that that was going to be the same thing with YouTube. And I just applied that, I guess, wisdom in a way. So it's, it, how do you trust the process? You look at previous processes that while you're in the middle of it, you didn't think was possible, but eventually you came through it. And that's a good way to uh, trust the process, I guess. Can I get lean using only a bench and 25 pound dumbbells combined with a caloric deficit? This is such a specific question. Technically, yes. Why would you want to do that? I guess this guy only has 25 dumbbells and a bench in his house. Yes, you can. That's a, that, yes, you can. But it really depends on your starting point and your style of training and how you want to train. Obviously, it's better to have more options, but you can technically do it with even no dumbbells and no bench just your body is it okay to drink whey protein milkshake early in the morning during intermittent fasting i would say that's not the best idea because fasting you want to actually fast right so if you fast and you have whey protein which is like 120 calories or even 200 calories then you, you're not really fasting you just had a whole bunch of protein right so you wouldn't get the benefits of fasting but if that is the best way that you can sustain your diet for a long period of time then yeah you know why not do that why do you have a uk accent why do i guess why because i 
grew up in the UK since I was 10, 11 ish. I went to school there, secondary school, high school, whatever you want to call it, and then university there as well. So, and then I spent a lot of time in Europe, which is why my accent is not like, you know, super, super English, British. Sometimes I sound a little American or like uh, my accent is a bit mixed because uh, a lot of time was spent with international people and I just kind of molded into this like hybrid weird accent. Make us a workout program to follow. I did that. I did that. Not only did I do that, I made like three for men who want to go to the gym, one for people that want to do bodyweight training and they couldn't access the gym and another one for women and it's all linked you know for free in the description and also in my uh, bio to my instagram so 안녕하세요 구독자입니다 영어 공부 겸 시청하고 있어요 한국말도 잘하시는 거죠 that's a korean question thank you very much 한국말도 잘하는 건 아닌데 할 줄은 압니다 um, very happy to see Korean subscribers comment on my videos because obviously I'm Korean and uh, I would really like to give back to the Korean audience and add subtitles and even make Korean content somewhere further down the line. Any books you'd recommend to read? Ooh, there's a lot. It really depends on what kind of thing you're trying to get out of book. So I guess I will give you different options for different areas if you want to read fiction and you're interested in philosophy and psychology and you know the depths of human nature and you want to just like go crazy then i would recommend uh, dostoevsky just brothers karamazov is this fat book probably the best book that i've ever read and you can expect to um yeah it's a crazy book you'll think a lot you will maybe even pull out your hair a little bit but it's an amazing book. If you wanted to get into sort of meditation and, you know, being more present, then like I said, any book by Eckhart Tolle, especially Power of Now and The New Earth, you know, even just audiobook versions, they are extremely, extremely powerful. And they've changed my life probably more than any other books. I could recommend you like philosophy books, but like um, Genealogy of Morals by Friedrich Nietzsche. It's another good one. I don't know, I'll have to think a lot about that. And in terms of, you know, social stuff, I think how to win for friends and influence people. I think never split the difference in terms of negotiation and sales and things. I think, yeah, there's a lot of good books, right? So this is probably a perfect time to explain to you what Shortform does, the sponsor of this video. Shortform summarizes the best nonfiction books in the world to a couple of pages. It brings you the key points best little nuggets that you need to remember from some of the best books like how to win friends and influence people never split the difference the power of now crucial conversation all books that i had read that i went back and reread through short form when you read a book sometimes you are inspired and moved in the moment of reading them but then it doesn't really have an impact in your life you kind of forget about it and you're like wait a second i need i'm going into this job interview and I wish I could recall what Chris Voss said in Never Split the Difference about how to have, you know, a proper negotiation. Or you wonder, why am I not improving my social skills and how can I apply the teachings that I learned in How to Win Friends and Influence People? This is a high stakes conversation where I have to talk to a team member and it's kind of anxiety driven. It's kind of a difficult conversation and you wonder, wait. What if I remember that tip from Crucial Conversations that told me to really keep the end goal in mind? So what comes up is that instead of reading, you know, 10, 20, 30 books, instead of focusing on the number of books, what you want to focus on are the key books of your life and most importantly, acting it out in real life. Okay, some of you might even see similarities with the minimalist training that I talk about. It's like, instead of doing this exercise, that exercise, this exercise, that exercise, just doing more and more and more, what you want to do is focus on the key exercises that give you all the results and just repeat and get the most out of those key ones. It's the same thing with books and short form is what allows you to do that because you can just literally go back to some of the best books like your favorite books, The Power of Now, How to Win Friends and Influence People, you can go back to them and just refresh your memory 
instantly and they even have an audio version so you can listen to it and it's not like a six hour audio book it's just like you know three minutes six minutes and you can just refresh your memory like ah 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 you know and if you're someone that's busy that doesn't have time to read all of these books but you know that reading is foundational for your personal growth and expansion of your creativity and your mind and you want to actually read these books then short form again is a great way you can do that while saving your time okay but i personally think the best way to use short form is to actually use it as your companion to summarize and repeat the best points from your favorite books i will leave a link in the description with the link shortform.com forward slash one he you can get a five days free trial so you can try it out see if you like it and also a 20 percent discount on the annual subscription how do i overcome being intimidated by fit people at the gym see i get this question quite a lot a lot of people said um I have this gym anxiety. Nobody on, on YouTube is talking about gym anxiety and how like I feel stared at when I go to the gym like a zoo animal <laughs> or I feel like I don't know what I'm doing with the machines and the weights and that's that makes people anxious and that's why people don't go to the gym a lot of the time. And this was very new to me because I never experienced it. I was just like in uni, I was just excited to just go in and try stuff. But a lot of people struggle with this. So how do you overcome being intimidated? You don't have to be intimidated because nobody really knows what they're doing. Like 90% of the people in the gym, they don't know what they're doing that much. They've all seen some YouTube videos and they're all in there doing the same thing. It's the same with me, right? so it's just people trying to look good i guess one way i could give you advice is see the funny side we evolved from caveman days you know hunting in the wild and now the world has become so safe that we designed some heavy objects to throw around and grunt at and everyone wants to do it because they want to look a little bit better and have a little bit bigger arms so that you know women like them more or or men like them more whatever it is of course i know you do it for the health and the empowered feeling of it but <laughs> yeah it's a bit funny you know everyone's trying to look good so it's just like see the funny side also like i said before appreciate just understand the fact that you're gonna have to suck at something in order to get good at it it's almost a prerequisite think about anything that you're good at anything that you value about yourself you sucked before right you you can walk i'm pretty sure you you value the fact that you can walk but guess what you sucked at walking and you failed at it multiple times and you were laughed at maybe and embarrassed you know in a fun way i, I hope but that was the prerequisite for you being able to walk pretty well so it's the same thing with gym you know you have to go through that it's just like an initiation process to any skill worth having not a question just want to say i'm really enjoying your youtube content thank you so much thank you it's crazy to see you know the comments and the emails and the dms that i get and i'm just like so happy that i get to help you in this so thank you i am skinny fat guy so should i go in calorie deficit or calorie surplus okay so a lot of people have been asking for a skinny fat uh, guide video i will do that so look out for that you know hit the subscribe button if you're skinny fat and you want to find that out simple answer is depends but i would say if i had to choose calorie surplus because when you are skinny fat you have just these podges these pouches of fat in random parts of your body usually your lower belly and you're skinny everywhere everywhere else and if you're in a calorie deficit then you almost feel like you're just getting skinnier in the parts that are already skinny and still not losing the belly fat and eventually when you do lose the belly fat, you'll be so skinny that it just won't be a good look. So it's much better to even out your entire body by going in a caloric surplus, strength training with key compound movements, and then building up your entire physique so that your maintenance calories is over 2,400 calories. Then you want to cut to a lean physique. A lot of information there. I'll break it down in the other video. So yeah, hit the subscribe button. How do you maintain your gym schedule along with BJJ without getting exhausted or injured? This is something that I'm actually trying to figure out right now. I do three times a week in the gym and I try to do three times a week jujitsu because I think that's, you know, optimal for progress. But I feel like if I do six days of training a week, it's just too much and I burn out. I get like these headaches, I get super tired and I feel like I'm going to burn out. So recently I've dialed down so that I do jujitsu twice a week or sometimes even once a week. And I think 
I think once a week is optimal for your gym if that's your priority gym three times and then cardio or martial arts once but of course once a week for jujitsu if you've tried jujitsu it's just nowhere near enough right three is like the minimum so it's a dilemma it's a bit of a dilemma i want to go every day yeah i can't give you a straight answer to that one i'm from america trying to make it in korea any tips depends what you're trying to make it in are you trying to make it as an actor a singer whatever it is you know any tips I guess you're trying to ask about the specificities of Korean culture and how you can best navigate yourself. In which case I would say, just try to befriend as many Korean people as possible. And if they put up a barrier, it's a very Korean thing to do. And once you get close to them, Korean people open up a lot and they can be, you know, very, very good friends as well. I don't know, it's a random tip. Any diet tips for losing those last 10 pounds? Do whatever you did to get to those last 10 pounds right so whatever you did to lose those 30 pounds just keep doing that consistently get really serious about measuring calories walk a lot walk 10,000 steps boom that's how you get rid of the last 10 what are some other excellent sources of protein besides chicken breast and egg whites there's canned tuna sardines protein shakes steak lean meats turkey tofu lentils there's lots there's lots you just gotta do a quick google search lots of beans and nuts and peanuts peanut butter but i think i i usually have chicken and tuna a lot with fish mackerel you know salmon will you do a fashion video well maybe even though it's a strange question because i never considered myself fashionable in fact quite the opposite i didn't really know how to dress i dress quite badly for most of my life i think nowadays i'm fairly you know okay um but again with fashion it's just like you got to learn i think the basics right of like just not trying to do something too crazy just get the basics right um about your fit your silhouette and color combinations and things so maybe who knows maybe in the future maybe 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 if you want favorite books again jesus christ i don't really read <laughs> no, i'm kidding favorite books there's also this italian novel by elena ferrante which was very very famous recently the napolitan novels that was very good a hero of our time by lermontov why not you are the goat thank you how much time does it take to lose 15 kilograms depends but i would say the longer it takes the better because then you are less likely to bounce back do you use protein powder and if yes what do you use i haven't used it in the last six months but i did use it some months ago and i used to have my protein natural chocolate chocolate yeah what's your favorite food to cook probably kerampap which is this korean egg rice soy sauce sesame oil crispy seaweed combination like tomato mozzarella basil olive oil combination it's just made by the lord himself it's just beautiful if you haven't tried it try it yourself in italian food i love cooking pasta carbonara norma norma not so much because it's hard to cook without the salty ricotta but um vongole pasta with pomodorini everything is korea a healthy minded place for you in some respects yes in some respects no right now i'm going through a period in my life where I'm not going around meeting a whole bunch of new people and partying and befriending and making deals and chatting. I don't really do that. I just focus on, you know, this, like making videos and, you know, making my course and things like this. So, yeah, I guess it's fine. I guess it's fine. Wherever you are, there are healthy minded people. It's just about having the self-discipline and the boundary to cut out those that don't fit that mold for you and that's not a bad thing by the way it's just like you got to protect your time you got to protect your energy it is a healthy minded place yeah thoughts on the minnesota starvation experiment i do not know what that is maybe i'm very ignorant but i'll have to skip that one is a personal trainer necessary to get good results or online workouts can be useful child a personal trainer i think is not a very good idea unless you're like absolutely loaded and you have massive contact with this person because a personal trainer can only really teach you so much and he's in the gym teaching you these exercises and how to do these exercises maybe he tells you a couple things to do with nutrition but he's not really 
keeping you accountable and staying in touch with you and and making sure that your mindset's in the right place it's just all the information about how to do the exercises what exercises to do and the routines they're all in the they're all on the internet right and you do it a couple of times like at the beginning to learn how to do it then you can do it yourself tips for someone trying to keep a healthy diet while not eating meats so vegetarian or vegan i guess tips for someone trying to keep a healthy diet uh just try to eat as many whole foods as possible and take some of those supplements i guess that they say you know you only find in meat which you know maybe it's a myth vitamin b12 or whatever uh, but I would say just to be on the safe side, you know, take those healthy supplements and vitamins, uh, make use of that and try to opt for whole foods. Do you have any insights on tips on running and knee strength? Tips on running, not so much. I'm not the biggest runner for reasons outlined in all my other videos about what I think about high intensity cardio, right? Spikes hunger. I prefer to just walk. Knee strength. You want to check out knees over toes guy, Ben Patrick, uh, pioneer of anything to do with knees. ATG split squat. It's the one word you need for knee strength. Hey brother, how are you? I am good. I am good. How do I increase my protein while being a vegetarian? Tofu, lentils, nuts, vegan protein shakes. What's your body fat percentage? Right now, probably like 14%. Uh, in my thumbnails, probably around 10. I'm a vegetarian. Can't meet my protein needs every day. How many grams of protein a day do you suggest? I always say try to aim for 100 grams. It's easy to calculate. Not too stressful to remember. Um, but yeah, like I said, tofu, lentils, vegan protein, and nuts. There must be some other things, you know. Next, why are you so fine? Uh, why are you so fine? What is your favorite food indulgence? Favorite food indulgence? Ramen. Korean ramen. Shin ramen. And Samyang ramen. And all the Korean instant ramen that's just... By the way, if you haven't tried Korean instant ramen, not the pot noodle, right? But the ones you actually, like, boil in the pot insane insane do you have any goals you want to achieve this year if you have what are they i have a lot of goals that i want to achieve this year one of which is to help as many people as possible get in an amazing shape i also want to get blue belt in jiu-jitsu i also want to you know, spend more time with the family and i have a lot of other goals that are way more specific and written down but i will not share them with you because yeah it's personal what's your height and weight i am like once i'm 175 centimeters that's 5'9 is that 5'9 and 73 kilograms right now gained like three kilograms recently <laughs> yeah normally i'm around 71 kilograms 70 to 71 kilograms have a hard time controlling the urges to snack in between the main meals any thoughts coffee always helps to suppress your appetite but then again you know why not have a little snack in between if it gives you that extra energy as long as the snack is not a massively high calorie thing you know if you're just having cinnamon rolls all the time then yeah that's an issue but if you have a biscuit here and there or like some fruits or protein bars or chocolate whatever have it have it enjoy it enjoy it yo mans could you make a video on how to meditate youtubers don't know how to guide about meditation i could do that but i wouldn't be the best person to do it because there's a lot of great meditation guides and uh, people that you know specialize in this i would say one meditation technique that i want to share with you it's like a super hack it's like takes five seconds is you want to just close your eyes and bring intense awareness to like your feet that are like your feet that are stuck to the ground all the way up to the top of your head and just really bring awareness to the fact that it's there right now like it's there like it's not not there and that will make you present for like a microsecond that's a micro meditation technique visually improved after two months but the scale shows the same weight is that normal yes that's normal you want to measure your weight consistently to avoid things like this because your weight on the scale can change a lot depending on how much water weight you're carrying which also depends on your stress levels and you know how much you know let's say high intensity activity that you did how much alcohol you drank the night before so your your weight can fluctuate but the fact that you visually improved after two months that's a sure sure sign that you have probably built some muscle, right? Because two months is one of those things where if you've actually consistently trained, yeah, you're gonna see some good changes. So, you know, maybe you build some muscle, lost some fat, but because muscle weighs more than fat, your weight is the same. Just keep doing that, keep building muscle. And then if you really wanna get lean, you know, check out my videos on how to get lean. What are your biggest discipline tips to stick to your diet? The biggest discipline tips, one is to measure your weight and your calories 
and the next is to eat similar things on most days so that you don't have to use a lot of discipline. Does two scoops of protein shake every day affect our body in the long run, e.g. liver failure? I don't know. I rarely, rarely, if ever, took two scoops in one day. I would have one scoop after a workout every now and then. Not the right person to ask for that one. How to lose belly fat. There's literally a video called How to Lose Belly Fat in the, in the channel. I always cheat on meals, give some tips for students who have coaching after college and have to study. Yeah, you always cheat on meals. Yeah, there could be a lot of triggers for this. I would say you want to look at your... Yeah, this... this it's, it's tricky. It's, it's hard for me to answer that because I don't know what's triggering it. I pay attention to the triggers. Is it a certain kind of food? Is it a certain kind of feeling in your body? Is it a certain kind of stress level? Is it a certain kind of environment? You know, pay attention to those triggers. How long did it take you to truly look how you look now? And how did you stay motivated? It's It depends. I guess because I started training at around like 20, I guess you could say it took like 10 years. But also I was not training for years. I was training for some months and not training for other months. So you can, I will say this, if you are serious and consistent about your training and you have a good mentor and you have good accountability and you stay on track with your diet, with your nutrition, and you do all that, one year you can make a change that is like unbelievable, unbelievable. Even in six months you can, but I would say one year is, is, is a good aim. Who is your role model? Jurgen Klopp. It's very inspirational. Yeah, just a great guy. Would you recommend doing cardio to get shredded? If the answer is yes, how much in a week? I would not recommend doing cardio to get shredded. I would recommend walking. What's your profession? I do this now. I do online uh, coaching. I also recently came out with a flagship body transformation program, which I'll leave in the link below. If you want to check that out. Um, and YouTube, obviously. Do you have any recommendation for hormonal belly fat? I am unaware of what hormonal belly fat is, but I guess my tip would be to do the same things, really, for belly fat whether it's hormonal or not. And there's a video just dedicated to that. Least favorite exercise at the gym. I don't really have one. I think that's quite a good thing, actually, yeah. The best fast food to eat when on a diet would be some kind of burrito? I don't know. Fast foods aren't that great um, when you're on a diet, to be honest, but whatever. McDonald's double cheeseburger, just hit that craving. Have it, enjoy it. Make sure you know the calories and um, don't overindulge. Minimalist stretching routine. It's actually part of my body weight program. Links in the description if you want to check that out. What is the lowest body fat percentage you reached and how long did you maintain it? I think the lowest, I didn't calculate it, but judging by the look of it, maybe like 10%, maybe even 9%. How long did I maintain it? For about six months. And now I hover so somewhere around like 11 to 14%, but you know, I can get down there when I want, I guess. So it's not, you don't want to think of it as this, like you hit it once and then you bounce back. You know, you want to think long term. All right. Going to stop there because it's a long ass video. And I don't think I got to every question because there's just so many. But uh, maybe I'll do more of these and then I'll get to these other questions as well. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please let me know. And uh, please, yeah, if you want. More videos like this, let me know. And I hope this video helped you guys. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. All right, so the first question is, what inspired you to start your YouTube channel?